SQL Server is sold in several different editions. So it's useful to go ahead and just explain what the editions are so you're familiar with how to go ahead and purchase and configure SQL Server. To do this, I'm going to go to the Microsoft.com website and pull up the page that just shows all the different editions. So this is the home site for Microsoft SQL Server. Under Editions, just open up any one of them. So this page has a comparison of the different editions. Just to walk through these and explain them. The most common edition is Standard. The standard edition allows you to have up to four physical sockets for the CPU and includes all the features normally used within SQL Server except for the real high-end features for Enterprise. And we'll talk about that in a second. But I want to make sure you understand that the number of CPU limitation here, as far as 1, 2, 4, or no limit, is based not upon the number of logical cores within the CPU, but you're only charged for the physical socket. So if you have a dual core or a quad core processor inside your server, you can really save a lot of money by licensing it only for, say, two CPUs, and those two CPUs are each quad core CPUs, which can save you a lot of money as far as licensing it. Let's go ahead and walk through these then. Express is the replacement for the old MSDN, or Desktop Edition, of SQL Server that we had back in SQL Server 2000. Express is completely free. A difference between it and the old MSDN is that there is no longer any kind of limitation or governing factor as far as how many connections or users you can have. It's limited to only one physical socket of the CPU, one gigabyte of RAM. So there is a limitation there as far as the scalability. It's primarily intended to be an embedded database within a small application. Notice the database size is only 4 gigs. It does not include any of the high-end features like partitioning. You can't even do log shipping with Express. It does include the auto-tuning. Express does include many of the new programming features. A limitation of Express is this import-export, so it does not have integration services. SQL Server Express is really intended to be an embedded database within an application. The Workgroup Edition is really intended to be a sub-server which is connected to other databases or other servers that are standard or enterprise. By itself, it does not have mirroring, failover clustering, some of the other features missing. Integrated services are not a part of Workgroup, either the basic or advanced. The nice thing about Workgroup is that it does include reporting services and report builder, so you can get by with Workgroup for some smaller applications. I would say most of the databases, most of the needs are met by standard. A number of clients that I know have in the past gone to enterprise just so they could have more memory or more CPUs. But standard allowing you to have four CPUs or four sockets with multiple CPU cores really gets around that problem. The memory limitation of standard was lifted from 2000-2005 and it's dependent now only by the operating system. There is a 64-bit version for it and there's no database size at all. So a number of shops assume they need to go to enterprise when really standard will work fine for them. The Enterprise Edition is intended for those very large installations that would have maybe 16 CPUs, 32 gigs of memory or even more, and it's these large terabyte-sized databases or up that benefit from partitioning, indexed views, some of these high scalability features that are available only inside of Enterprise Edition. For example, the online indexing, the fast recovery, these are features that really only benefit very large databases of over a terabyte. Two other editions worth mentioning. The first is the Developer Edition. The benefit of the Developer Edition is that it's cheap. You can get it on Amazon.com, usually about $40. It includes every feature from Enterprise Edition, but it's licensed differently. You cannot use Developer Edition for anything in production other than doing your development. So Developer Edition is very cool. It's easy to load up. It loads up on a workstation class operating system like Windows XP where Enterprise Edition would not load up on that operating system. Another one to talk about is Mobile Edition, which was renamed SQL Everywhere, which was renamed Compact Edition. So you'll see all three of those names floating around as people blog about this or talk about this. 
The real point of SQL Server 2005 Compact Edition is it allows you to deploy SQL Server databases on even handheld devices. So think about the scalability here. When you're working with SQL Server 2005, you can develop it on your notebook, test it on a small server, scale it all the way up to the largest 64-bit servers. You can also take your same database and scale it down to only handheld devices and tie them all together with replication if you need to. SQL Server 2005, lots of different editions. Use the right edition for the right purpose. One feature they did include in the mobile version or edition of SQL Server 2005 is the ability to replicate. So it can be used in replication to connect to one of the other editions, which is very cool. Some of the applications you can build with mobile edition or compact edition gives you a lot of capabilities on your smart client, whether it's a mobile phone or, or some type of small handheld device. They can then replicate backups. That's also very cool.